Maya, Devanagari, Maya Iast, Maya, literally, illusion, or magic, has multiple meanings in Indian philosophies depending on the context. In ancient Vedic literature, Maya literally implies extraordinary power and wisdom. In later Vedic texts and modern literature dedicated to Indian traditions, Maya connotes a magic show, an illusion where things appear to be present but are not what they seem. Maya is also a spiritual concept connoting that which exists, but is constantly changing and thus is spiritually unreal, and the power or the principle that conceals the true character of spiritual reality. In Buddhism, Maya is the name of Gautama Buddha's mother. In Hinduism, Maya is also an epithet for goddess, and the name of a manifestation of Lakshmi, the goddess of wealth, prosperity and love. Maya is also a name for girls. Etymology and terminology Maya Sanskrit, Maya is a word with unclear etymology, probably comes from the root ma which means, to measure. According to Monier Williams, Maya meant wisdom and extraordinary power in an earlier older language, but from the Vedic period onwards, the word came to mean illusion, unreality, deception, fraud, trick, sorcery, witchcraft and magic. However, P. D. Shastri states that the Monier Williams list is a loose definition, misleading generalization and not accurate in interpreting ancient Vedic and medieval era Sanskrit texts, instead, he suggests a more accurate meaning of Maya as appearance, not mere illusion. According to William Mahoney, the root of the word may be man or to think, implying the role of imagination in the creation of the world. In early Vedic usage, the term implies, states Mahoney, the wondrous and mysterious power to turn an idea into a physical reality. Franklin Southworth states the word's origin is uncertain, and other possible roots of Maya include may meaning mystify, confuse, intoxicate, delude, as well as may which means, disappear, be lost. Jan Gonda considers the word related to ma, which means, mother, as do Tracy Pinchman and Adrian Snodgrass, serving as an epithet for goddesses such as Lakshmi. Maya here implies art, is the maker's power, writes Zimmer, a mother in all three worlds. A creatrix, her magic is the activity in the will spirit. A similar word is also found in the Avestan Maya with the meaning of magic power. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Hinduism. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Literature. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> The Vedas. Words related to and containing Maya, such as Mayava, occur many times in the Vedas. These words have various meanings, with interpretations that are contested, and some are names of deities that do not appear in texts of 1st millennium BCE and later. The use of word Maya in Rig Veda, in the later era context of magic, illusion, power, occurs in many hymns. One titled Maya Beta, Maya Beta Discerning Illusion includes hymns 10.177.1 through 10.177.3, as the battle unfolds between the good and the evil, as follows. The above Maya Beta hymn discerns, using symbolic language, a contrast between mind influenced by light sun and magic illusion of Asura. The hymn is a call to discern one's enemies, perceive artifice, and distinguish, using one's mind, between that which is perceived and that which is unperceived. Rig Veda does not connote the word Maya as always good or always bad, it is simply a form of technique, mental power and means. Rig Veda uses the word in two contexts, implying that there are two kinds of Maya, divine Maya and undivine Maya, the former being the foundation of truth, the latter of falsehood. Elsewhere in Vedic mythology, Indra uses Maya to conquer Vritra. Varuna's supernatural power is called Maya. Maya, in such examples, connotes powerful magic, which both devas gods and asuras demons use against each other. In the Yajurveda, Maya is an unfathomable plan. In the Aitareya Brahmana Maya is also referred to as Durgajavi, hostile to gods and sacrifices. The hymns in Book 8, Chapter 10 of Atharvaveda describe the primordial woman Viraj, Viraj chief queen and how she willingly gave the knowledge of food, plants, agriculture, husbandry, water, prayer, knowledge, strength, inspiration, concealment, charm, virtue, vice to gods, demons, men and living creatures, despite all of them making her life miserable. 
In hymns of 8.10.22, Viraj is used by Asuras demons who call her as Maya, as follows. The contextual meaning of Maya in Atharvaveda is, power of creation, not illusion. Gonda suggests the central meaning of Maya in Vedic literature as, wisdom and power enabling its possessor, or being able itself, to create, devise, contrive, affect, or do something. Maya stands for anything that has real, material form, human or non-human, but that does not reveal the hidden principles and implicit knowledge that creates it. An illustrative example of this in Rig Veda 7.104.24 and Atharva Veda 8.4.24 where Indra is invoked against the Maya of sorcerers appearing in the illusory form, like a Fata Morgana, of animals to trick a person. The Upanishads. The Upanishads describe the universe, and the human experience, as an interplay of purusha the eternal, unchanging principles, consciousness and prakriti the temporary, changing material world, nature. The former manifests itself as atman soul, self, and the latter as maya. The Upanishads refer to the knowledge of atman as true knowledge, vidya, and the knowledge of maya as not true knowledge, avidya, nescience, lack of awareness, lack of true knowledge. Brihadaranyaka Upanishad, states Ben Ami Sharfstein, describes Maya as the tendency to imagine something where it does not exist, for example, Atman with the body. To the Upanishads, knowledge includes empirical knowledge and spiritual knowledge. Complete knowing necessarily includes understanding the hidden principles that work, the realization of the soul of things. Hendrik Vroom explains. The term Maya has been translated as illusion, but then it does not concern normal illusion. Here, illusion does not mean that the world is not real and simply a figment of the human imagination. Maya means that the world is not as it seems, the world that one experiences is misleading as far as its true nature is concerned. Lynn Foulston states the world is both real and unreal because it exists but is not what it appears to be. Quote, According to Wendy Doniger, to say that the universe is an illusion Maya, is not to say that it is unreal, it is to say, instead, that it is not what it seems to be, that it is something constantly being made. Maya not only deceives people about the things they think they know, more basically, it limits their knowledge. Maya pre-exists and co-exists with Brahman, the ultimate principle, consciousness. Maya is perceived reality, one that does not reveal the hidden principles, the true reality. Maya is unconscious, Atman is conscious. Maya is the literal, Brahman is the figurative Upadana, the principle, the cause. Maya is born, changes, evolves, dies with time, from circumstances, due to invisible principles of nature, state the Upanishads. Atman Brahman is eternal, unchanging, invisible principle, unaffected absolute and resplendent consciousness. Maya concept in the Upanishads, states Archibald Goff, is the indifferent aggregate of all the possibilities of emanatory or derived existences, pre-existing with Brahman, just like the possibility of a future tree pre-exists in the seed of the tree, the concept of Maya appears in numerous Upanishads. The verses 4.9-4.10 of Svetasvatara Upanishad, is the oldest explicit occurrence of the idea that Brahman supreme soul is the hidden reality, nature is magic, Brahman is the magician, human beings are infatuated with the magic and thus they create bondage to illusions and delusions, and for freedom and liberation one must seek true insights and correct knowledge of the principles behind the hidden magic. Gaudapada in his Karika on Mandukya Upanishad explains the interplay of Atman and Maya as follows. Sarvasara Upanishad refers to two concepts, Mithya and Maya. It defines Mithya as illusion and calls it one of three kinds of substances, along with Sat and Azat Maya, Sarvasara Upanishad defines as all what is not Atman. Maya has no beginning, but has an end. Maya, declares Sarvasara, is anything that can be studied and subjected to proof and disproof, anything with gunas. In the human search for self-knowledge, Maya is that which obscures, confuses and distracts an individual. The Puranas and Tamil texts In Puranas and Vaishnava theology, Maya is described as one of the nine shaktis of Vishnu. 
Maya became associated with sleep, and Vishnu's Maya is sleep which envelopes the world when he awakes to destroy evil. Vishnu, like Indra, is the master of Maya, and Maya envelopes Vishnu's body. The Bhagavata Purana narrates that the sage Markandeya requests Vishnu to experience his Maya. Vishnu appears as an infant floating on a fig leaf in a deluge and then swallows the sage, the sole survivor of the cosmic flood. The sage sees various worlds of the universe, gods etc. and his own hermitage in the infant's belly. Then the infant breathes out the sage, who tries to embrace the infant, but everything disappears and the sage realizes that he was in his hermitage the whole time and was given a flavor of Vishnu's Maya. The magic creative power, Maya was always a monopoly of the central solar god, and was also associated with the early solar prototype of Vishnu in the early Aditya phase. In Sangam period Tamil literature, Krishna is found as Mayan, with other attributed names are such as Mal, Tirumal, Purumal, and Mayavan. In the Tamil classics, Durga is referred to by the feminine form of the word, viz., male, wherein she is endowed with unlimited creative energy and the great powers of Vishnu, and is hence Vishnu Maya. Maya, to Shaiva Siddhanta sub-school of Hinduism, states Hilko Shomaris, is reality and truly existent, and one that exists to "...provide souls with bhavana a world, boga objects of enjoyment, tanu a body, and karana organs." Topic. Schools of Hinduism Topic. Need to understand Maya The various schools of Hinduism, particularly those based on naturalism rationalism or ritualism mimamsa, questioned and debated what is Maya, and the need to understand Maya. The Vedanta and Yoga schools explained that complete realization of knowledge requires both the understanding of ignorance, doubts and errors, as well as the understanding of invisible principles, incorporeal and the eternal truths. In matters of self-knowledge, stated Shankara in his commentary on Taittiriya Upanishad, one is faced with the question, Who is it that is trying to know, and how does he attain Brahman? It is absurd, states Shankara, to speak of one becoming himself, because, Thou art that. Already. Realizing and removing ignorance is a necessary step, and this can only come from understanding Maya and then looking beyond it. The need to understand Maya is like the metaphorical need for road. Only when the country to be reached is distant, states Shankara, that a road must be pointed out. It is a meaningless contradiction to assert, I am right now in my village, but I need a road to reach my village. It is the confusion, ignorance and illusions that need to be repealed. It is only when the knower sees nothing else but his self that he can be fearless and permanent. Vivekananda explains the need to understand Maya as follows abridged. The Vedas cannot show you Brahman, you are that already. They can only help to take away the veil that hides truth from our eyes. The cessation of ignorance can only come when I know that God and I are one, in other words, identify yourself with Atman, not with human limitations. The idea that we are bound is only an illusion Maya. Freedom is inseparable from the nature of the Atman. This is ever pure, ever perfect, ever unchangeable. The text Yoga Vasistha explains the need to understand Maya as follows. Just as when the dirt is removed, the real substance is made manifest, just as when the darkness of the night is dispelled, the objects that were shrouded by the darkness are clearly seen, when ignorance maya is dispelled, truth is realized. Topic. Samkhya school The early works of Samkhya, the rationalist school of Hinduism, do not identify or directly mention the Maya doctrine. The discussion of Maya theory, calling it into question, appears after the theory gains ground in Vedanta school of Hinduism. Vikaspati Misra's commentary on the Samkhyakarika, for example, questions the Maya doctrine saying, It is not possible to say that the notion of the phenomenal world being real is false, for there is no evidence to contradict it. Samkhya school steadfastly retained its duality concept of prakriti and purusha, both real and distinct, with some texts equating prakriti to be maya that is, not illusion, but real, with three gunas in different proportions whose changing state of equilibrium defines the perceived reality. James Ballantyne, in 1885, commented on Kapila's Sankhya aphorism 5.72 which he translated as, everything except nature and soul is uneternal. According to Ballantyne, this aphorism states that the mind, ether, etc. in a state of cause not developed into a product are called nature and not intellect. 
He adds, that scriptural texts such as Shvetashvatara Upanishad to be stating, "...he should know illusion to be nature and him in whom is illusion to be the great Lord and the world to be pervaded by portions of him, since soul and nature are also made up of parts, they must be uneternal." However, acknowledges Balantine, Edward Goff translates the same verse in Shvetashvatara Upanishad differently, let the sage know that Prakriti is Maya and that Mahisvara is the Mayan, or arch-illusionist. All this shifting world is filled with portions of him. In continuation of the Samkhya and Upanishadic view, in the Bhagavata philosophy, Maya has been described as that which appears even when there is no object like silver in a shell and which does not appear in the Atman, with Maya described as the power that creates, maintains and destroys the universe. Topic. Naya school The realism-driven Naya school of Hinduism denied that either the world or the soul are an illusion. Nayayikas developed theories of illusion, typically using the term mithya, and stated that illusion is simply flawed cognition, incomplete cognition or the absence of cognition. There is no deception in the reality of prakriti or pradana creative principle of matter, nature or purusa, only confusion or lack of comprehension or lack of cognitive effort, according to Naya scholars. To them, illusion has a cause, that rules of reason and proper pramanas epistemology can uncover. Illusion, stated Nayayikas, involves the projection into current cognition of predicated content from memory, a form of rushing to interpret, judge, conclude. This projection illusion is misplaced, and stereotypes something to be what it is not. The insights on theory of illusion by Naya scholars were later adopted and applied by Advaita Vedanta scholars. Topic. Yoga school Maya in yoga school is the manifested world and implies divine force. Yoga and Maya are two sides of the same coin, states Zimmer, because what is referred to as Maya by living beings who are enveloped by it, is yoga for the Brahman universal principle, supreme soul whose yogic perfection creates the Maya. Maya is neither illusion nor denial of perceived reality to the yoga scholars, rather yoga is a means to perfect the creative discipline of mind and body mind force to transform maya the concept of yoga as power to create maya has been adopted as a compound word yogamaya yogamaya by the theistic sub schools of hinduism it occurs in various mythologies of the puranas for example shiva uses his yogamaya to transform markandeya's heart in bhagavata puranas chapter 12.10 while krishna counsels arjuna about yogamaya in hymn 7.25 of bhagavad gita Topic. Vedanta school Maya is a prominent and commonly referred to concept in Vedanta philosophies. Maya is often translated as illusion in the sense of appearance. Human mind constructs a subjective experience, states Vedanta school, which leads to the peril of misunderstanding Maya as well as interpreting Maya as the only and final reality. Vedantins assert the perceived world including people are not what they appear to be. There are invisible principles and laws at work, true invisible nature in others and objects, an invisible soul that one never perceives directly, but this invisible reality of self and soul exists, assert Vedanta scholars. Maya is that which manifests, perpetuates a sense of false duality or divisional plurality. This manifestation is real, but it obfuscates and eludes the hidden principles and true nature of reality. Vedanta school holds that liberation is the unfettered realization and understanding of these invisible principles, the self, that the self soul in oneself is same as the self in another and the self in everything Brahman. The difference within various sub-schools of Vedanta is the relationship between individual soul and cosmic soul Brahman. Non-theistic Advaita sub-school holds that both are one, everyone is thus deeply connected oneness, there is God in everyone and everything, while theistic Dvaita and other sub-schools hold that individual souls and God's soul are distinct and each person can at best love God constantly to get one soul infinitely close to his soul. Advaita Vedanta In Advaita Vedanta philosophy, there are two realities, Vyavaharika empirical reality and Paramarthika absolute, spiritual reality. Maya is the empirical reality that entangles consciousness. Maya has the power to create a bondage to the empirical world, preventing the unveiling of the true, unitary self—the cosmic spirit also known as Brahman. 
The theory of Maya was developed by the 9th century Advaita Hindu philosopher Adi Shankara. However, competing theistic Dvaita scholars contested Shankara's theory, and stated that Shankara did not offer a theory of the relationship between Brahman and Maya. A later Advaita scholar Prakasatman addressed this, by explaining, "...Maya and Brahman together constitute the entire universe, just like two kinds of interwoven threads create a fabric. Maya is the manifestation of the world, whereas Brahman, which supports Maya, is the cause of the world." Maya is a fact in that it is the appearance of phenomena. Since Brahman is the sole metaphysical truth, Maya is true in epistemological and empirical sense, however, Maya is not the metaphysical and spiritual truth. The spiritual truth is the truth forever, while what is empirical truth is only true for now. Since Maya is the perceived material world, it is true in perception context, but is untrue in spiritual context of Brahman. Maya is not false, it only clouds the inner self and principles that are real. True reality includes both Vyavaharika empirical and Paramarthika spiritual, the Maya and the Brahman. The goal of spiritual enlightenment, state Advaitins, is to realize Brahman, realize the fearless, resplendent oneness, Vivekananda said. When the Hindu says the world is Maya, at once people get the idea that the world is an illusion. This interpretation has some basis, as coming through the Buddhistic philosophers, because there was one section of philosophers who did not believe in the external world at all. But the Maya of the Vedanta, in its last developed form, is neither idealism nor realism, nor is it a theory. It is a simple statement of facts—what we are and what we see around us. <laughs> Buddhism. The early Buddhist texts contain some references to illusion, the most well known of which is the Phenapindapama Sutta in Pali and with a Chinese Agama parallel at Sa 265 which states Suppose, monks, that a magician or a magician's apprentice would display a magical illusion at a crossroads. A man with good sight would inspect it, ponder, and carefully investigate it, and it would appear to him to be void ridika, hollow tachaka, corless asarika. For what core sorrow could there be in a magical illusion mayaya. So too, monks, whatever kind of cognition there is, whether past, future, or present, internal or external, gross or subtle, inferior or superior, far or near, a monk inspects it, ponders it, and carefully investigates it, and it would appear to him to be void ridika, hollow tachaka, corless asarika. For what core sorrow could there be in cognition? One sutra in the Agama collection known as Mahasutras of the Mula Sarvastivadin tradition entitled the Mayayala Net of Illusion deals especially with the theme of Maya. This sutra only survives in Tibetan translation and compares the five aggregates with further metaphors for illusion, including, an echo, a reflection in a mirror, a mirage, sense pleasures in a dream and a madman wandering naked. These texts give the impression that Maya refers to the insubstantial and essence-less nature of things as well as their deceptive, false and vain character. Later texts such as the Lalitavistara also contain references to illusion. Complexes have no inner might, are empty in themselves, rather like the stem of the plantain tree, when one reflects on them, like an illusion which deludes the mind like an empty fist with which a child is teased." The Salastamba Sutra also puts much emphasis on illusion, describing all dharmas as being characterized as illusory and vain, hollow, without core. Likewise the Mahavasta, a highly influential Mahasamgakan text on the life of the Buddha, states that the Buddha has shown that the aggregates are like a lightning flash, as a bubble, or as the white foam on a wave. Topic. Theravada In Theravada Buddhism, Maya is the name of the mother of the Buddha as well as a metaphor for the consciousness aggregate vijnana. The Theravada monk Bhikkhu Bodhi considers the Pali Phenapindapama Sutta one of the most radical discourses on the empty nature of conditioned phenomena. Bodhi also cites the Pali commentary on this sutra, the Saradhapakasini SPK, which states, Cognition is like a magical illusion maya in the sense that it is insubstantial and cannot be grasped. Cognition is even more transient and fleeting than a magical illusion. For it gives the impression that a person comes and goes, stands and sits, with the same mind, but the mind is different in each of these activities. Cognition deceives the multitude like a magical illusion maya. 
Likewise, Bhikkhu Katakurunde Nyanananda Thera has written an exposition of the Kalakarama Sutta which features the image of a magical illusion as its central metaphor. Sarvastivada The Nyananusara Sastra, a Vaibhasika response to Vasubandhu's Abhidharmakosha cites the Mayayala Sutra and explains, Seeing an illusory object maya, although what one apprehends is unreal, nothing more than an illusory sign. If one does not admit this much, then an illusory sign should be non-existent. What is an illusory sign? It is the result of illusion magic. Just as one with higher gnosis can magically create forms, likewise this illusory sign does actually have manifestation and shape. Being produced by illusion magic, it acts as the object of vision. That object which is taken as really existent is in fact ultimately non-existent. Therefore, this Mayayala Sutra states that it is non-existent, due to the illusory object there is a sign but not substantiality. Being able to beguile and deceive one, it is known as a deceiver of the eye. Topic. Mahayana In Mahayana Sutras, illusion is an important theme of the Prajnaparamita Sutras. Here, the magician's illusion exemplifies how people misunderstand and misperceive reality, which is in fact empty of any essence and cannot be grasped. The Mahayana uses similar metaphors for illusion, magic, a dream, a bubble, a rainbow, lightning, the moon reflected in water, a mirage, and a city of celestial musicians. Understanding that what we experience is less substantial than we believe is intended to serve the purpose of liberation from ignorance, fear, and clinging and the attainment of enlightenment as a Buddha completely dedicated to the welfare of all beings. The Prajnaparamita texts also state that all dharmas phenomena are like an illusion, not just the five aggregates, but all beings, including bodhisattvas and even nirvana. The Prajnaparamita Ritnaguna Samkhayagatha states, This Gnosis shows him all beings as like an illusion, resembling a great crowd of people, conjured up at the crossroads, by a magician, who then cuts off many thousands of heads, he knows this whole living world as a magical creation, and yet remains without fear. RGs 119 and also Those who teach Dharma, and those who listen when it is being taught, those who have won the fruition of a worthy one, a solitary Buddha, or a world savior, and the nirvana obtained by the wise and learned all is born of illusion so has the Tathagata declared, RGs 2 to 5 according to Ven. Dr. Huifeng, what this means is that bodhisattvas see through all conceptualizations and conceptions, for they are deceptive and illusory, and sever or cut off all these cognitive creations. Depending on the stage of the practitioner, the magical illusion is experienced differently. In the ordinary state, we get attached to our own mental phenomena, believing they are real, like the audience at a magic show gets attached to the illusion of a beautiful lady. At the next level, called actual relative truth, the beautiful lady appears, but the magician does not get attached. Lastly, at the ultimate level, the Buddha is not affected one way or the other by the illusion. Beyond conceptuality, the Buddha is neither attached nor non-attached. This is the middle way of Buddhism, which explicitly refutes the extremes of both eternalism and nihilism. Nagarjuna's Madhyamaka philosophy discusses nirmita, or illusion closely related to maya. In this example, the illusion is a self-awareness that is, like the magical illusion, mistaken. For Nagarjuna, the self is not the organizing command center of experience, as we might think. Actually, it is just one element combined with other factors and strung together in a sequence of causally connected moments in time. As such, the self is not substantially real, but neither can it be shown to be unreal. The continuum of moments, which we mistakenly understand to be a solid, unchanging self, still performs actions and undergoes their results. As a magician creates a magical illusion by the force of magic, and the illusion produces another illusion, in the same way the agent is a magical illusion and the action done is the illusion created by another illusion. What we experience may be an illusion, but we are living inside the illusion and bear the fruits of our actions there. We undergo the experiences of the illusion. What we do affects what we experience, so it matters. In this example, Nagarjuna uses the magician's illusion to show that the self is not as real as it thinks, yet, to the extent it is inside the illusion, real enough to warrant respecting the ways of the world. For the Mahayana Buddhist, the self is maya like a magic show and so are objects in the world. Vasubandhu's Trisvabhavanardesa, a Mahayana Yogacara, mind only. 
Text discusses the example of the magician who makes a piece of wood appear as an elephant. The audience is looking at a piece of wood but, under the spell of magic, perceives an elephant instead. Instead of believing in the reality of the illusory elephant, we are invited to recognize that multiple factors are involved in creating that perception, including our involvement in dualistic subjectivity, causes and conditions, and the ultimate beyond duality. Recognizing how these factors combine to create what we perceive ordinarily, ultimate reality appears. Perceiving that the elephant is illusory is akin to seeing through the magical illusion, which reveals the dharmadhatu, or ground a being. Topic. Tantra Buddhist Tantra, a further development of the Mahayana, also makes use of the magician's illusion example in yet another way. In the completion stage of Buddhist Tantra, the practitioner takes on the form of a deity in an illusory body mayadeha, which is like the magician's illusion. It is made of wind, or prana, and is called illusory because it appears only to other yogis who have also attained the illusory body. The illusory body has the markings and signs of a Buddha. There is an impure and a pure illusory body, depending on the stage of the yogi's practice. The concept that the world is an illusion is controversial in Buddhism. The Buddha does not state that the world is an illusion, but like an illusion. In the Dzogchen tradition the perceived reality is considered literally unreal, in that objects which make up perceived reality are known as objects within one's mind, and that, as we conceive them, there is no pre-determined object, or assembly of objects in isolation from experience that may be considered the true object, or objects. As a prominent contemporary teacher puts it, in a real sense, all the visions that we see in our lifetime are like a big dream. In this context, the term visions denotes not only visual perceptions, but appearances perceived through all senses, including sounds, smells, tastes and tactile sensations. Different schools and traditions in Tibetan Buddhism give different explanations of the mechanism producing the illusion usually called reality. Even the illusory nature of apparent phenomena is itself an illusion. Ultimately, the yogi passes beyond a conception of things either existing or not existing, and beyond a conception of either samsara or nirvana. Only then is the yogi abiding in the ultimate reality. Topic. Jainism Maya, in Jainism, means appearances or deceit that prevents one from samyaktva right belief. Maya is one of three causes of failure to reach right belief. The other two are mithyatva false belief and nidana hankering after fame and worldly pleasures. Maya is a closely related concept to mithyatva, with maya a source of wrong information while mithyatva an individual's attitude to knowledge, with relational overlap. Svetambara Jains classify categories of false belief under mithyatva into five, abhigrahika false belief that is limited to one's own scriptures that one can defend, but refusing to study and analyze other scriptures, anabhigrahika false belief that equal respect must be shown to all gods, teachers, scriptures, abhinivaseka false belief resulting from preconceptions with a lack of discernment and refusal to do so, samsayika state of hesitation or uncertainty between various conflicting, inconsistent beliefs, and anabhaja innate, default false beliefs that a person has not thought through on one's own. Digambara Jains classify categories of false belief under Mithyatva into seven, Akandika absolute, one-sided false belief, Samsayika uncertainty, doubt whether a course is right or wrong, unsettled belief, skepticism, Vainayika false belief that all gods, gurus and scriptures are alike, without critical examination, Grita false belief derived purely from habits or default, no self-analysis, Viparita false belief that true is false, false is true, everything is relative or acceptable, Nisargika false belief that all living beings are devoid of consciousness and cannot discern right from wrong, muda drsti false belief that violence and anger can tarnish or damage thoughts, divine, guru or dharma, maya deceit is also considered as one of four kasaya faulty passion, a trigger for actions in Jain philosophy. The other three are krata anger, mana pride and loba greed. The ancient Jain texts recommend that one must subdue these four faults, as they are source of bondage, attachment and non-spiritual passions. When he wishes that which is good for him, he should get rid of the four faults, krata, mana, maya and loba, which increase evil. Anger and pride when not suppressed, and deceit and greed when arising, all these four black passions water the roots of rebirth. Topic. Sikhism. 
In Sikhism, the world is regarded as both transitory and relatively real. God is viewed as the only reality, but within God exist both conscious souls and nonconscious objects, these created objects are also real. Natural phenomena are real but the effects they generate are unreal, maya is as the events are real yet maya is not as the effects are unreal. Sikhism believes that people are trapped in the world because of five vices, lust, anger, greed, attachment, and ego. Maya enables these five vices and makes a person think the physical world is real, whereas, the goal of Sikhism is to rid the self of them. Consider the following example, in the moonless night, a rope lying on the ground may be mistaken for a snake. We know that the rope alone is real, not the snake. However, the failure to perceive the rope gives rise to the false perception of the snake. Once the darkness is removed, the rope alone remains, the snake disappears. Sakti adhir jevarhi brahm chuka nichal siv gari vaasaa, in the darkness of Maya, I mistook the rope for the snake, but that is over, and now I dwell in the eternal home of the Lord, Sri Guru Granth Sahib 332. Raj Buang Prasang Jays Hahi Ab Kashu Maram Janaiya, like the story of the rope mistaken for a snake, the mystery has now been explained to me. Like the many bracelets, which I mistakenly thought were gold, now, I do not say what I said then. Sri Guru Granth Sahib 658. In some mythologies, the symbol of the snake was associated with money, and Maya in modern Punjabi refers to money. However, in the Guru Granth Sahib, Maya refers to the grand illusion of materialism. From this Maya, all other evils are born, but by understanding the nature of Maya, a person begins to approach spirituality. Janam Baritha Jat Rang M I Kai. 1. Ra O, oh, you are squandering this life uselessly in the love of Maya, Sri Guru Granth Sahib M.5 Guru Aryan Dev 12 Netherlands Antillian Guilders The teachings of the Sikh Gurus push the idea of Sewa selfless service and Simran prayer, meditation, or remembering one's true death. The depths of these two concepts and the core of Sikhism comes from Sangat congregation, by joining the congregation of true saints one is saved. By contrast, most people are believed to suffer from the false consciousness of materialism, as described in the following extracts from the Guru Granth Sahib. M. I. Mohi Vasari Jagat Pita Partipal. In attachment to Maya, they have forgotten the father, the cherisher of the world, Sri Guru Granth Sahib M. 3 Guru Amar Das 30 Netherlands Antillian Guilders. I. H. Sarir M. I. Ka Putla Vik Ha White Small Square Um I Dusty P. This body is the puppet of Maya. The evil of egotism is within it, Sri Guru Granth Sahib M3 Guru Amar Das Baba M I Baram Bull E, O Baba, Maya deceives with its illusion, Sri Guru Granth Sahib M1 Guru Nanak Dev 60 Netherlands Antillian Guilders. For that which we cannot see, feel, smell, touch, or understand, we do not believe. For this, we are merely fools walking on the grounds of great potential with no comprehension of what is. Buddhist monk quotation Topic. See also Akasmism Avidya Hinduism Avidya Buddhism Hindu cosmology Indrahala Kleshas Hinduism Phenomenon similar concept in western philosophy Topic Notes Topic References Topic Bibliography Buswell, Robert, Lopez, Donald S. twenty thirteen. The Princeton Dictionary of Buddhism. Princeton University Press. ISBN nine seven eight oh six nine one one five seven eight six three.